Hi there. Hope you're having a good day today. Here we're going to be looking at SI units and orders of magnitude. This is one area where maths and science really do meet up, so keep that in mind as we go forward. Scientists need to be sure that they are all working together in the same units. A unit is basically a way of counting something in fixed amounts, and they work best when they are standardized. In other words, when every unit is always exactly the same. One ancient unit was the cubit, which was used in ancient Egypt around 5,000 years ago. One cubit was the distance from the elbow to the tips of the fingers. But why do you think people don't use the cubit today? You can pause when I ask a question if you want time to think, but the reason we don't use cubits today is because cubits are not standardized. People can have shorter and longer forearms, and that changes the unit. Actually, the Egyptians did have a unit called the royal cubit, which was the very first standardized unit of measurement. But not all people in ancient Egypt had access to one of these royal cubit rods. Today, though, scientists need to make very precise measurements, and so they need to be extremely exact in their numbers. Over time, we have made better and better units, and the modern system of units in science is the SI system. The SI system is based on the metric system, which uses multiples of the number 10, so 10, 100, 1000, etc. And it's used for everyday measurements in almost the whole world. But all scientists have agreed to use the SI system, which stands for Système International. This is French because it was the French who first designed the metric system of counting. There are seven basic units in the SI system. There is the meter to measure distance, the kilogram to measure mass, the second for time, the ampere for electrical current, the kelvin for thermodynamic temperature, the candela for luminous intensity, and the mole for the amount of a substance. Don't worry if you're not familiar with all those units just now, but with only those seven units, we can calculate just about everything we need to know about the world. Each unit has its own symbol, which could be one or more lowercase or uppercase letters. A unit uses an uppercase letter if it's from someone's name, so there actually was a scientist called Ampere, and a scientist called Kelvin, and so on. You may have heard of other units that we use, but they can all be made up from these basic seven. For example, you might have heard of the Newton as a unit of force, but one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared, and kilograms, meters, and seconds are all basic SI units. Whatever unit you are using, though, you can make the number bigger or smaller with orders of magnitude, and that is what we're going to look at next. In modern science, we often have to use very big or very small numbers. We are often dealing with billions, trillions, or even larger quantities. There are a few ways to do this, but the first way is to use named orders of magnitude. A couple of quick questions. Be ready to pause if you want. What do we call one hundredth of a meter? You might use these quantities every day, but one one hundredth of a meter is one centimeter. Let's try another. What do we call one thousandth of a meter? If you look at the first answer, this might be a little bit easier, but one thousandth of a meter is a millimeter. And so these prefixes, centi and milli, are the names for orders of magnitude. Centi basically means one hundredth of a, and milli means one thousandth of a. Here is a table of some of the most common orders of magnitude and the names that we give them. You can see that in the middle row of the table is the number one. 
If we multiply something by 1, then it does not get bigger or smaller. We do not see the lower orders near to 1 very often because they are such small everyday numbers. We do use centimeters, but you won't usually hear about decimeters or decameters. If we go up the table, you can see kilo, like in kilogram or kilometer. A kilogram is three factors of 10 bigger. In other words, it's a thousand times bigger. And above that, we go to mega, which is a million times bigger, or six orders of 10. Giga is a billion times bigger. And some of you might even be familiar with Terra, which makes a number a trillion times bigger. The same goes on when we make things smaller. Milli makes a number 1000 times smaller. Micro is a million times smaller and nano a billion times smaller. Each of these different orders of magnitude has its own symbol, which might be either an uppercase or a lowercase letter. Make sure you get the right one. There is a big difference between millimeters and megameters. Let's do a few quick examples. So be ready to pause if you like. If you have 1000 grams of mass, which order of magnitude are you best off using? The answer is the kilogram. 1000 grams is one kilogram. Moving on, what about a billion bytes of information? Which of the orders should we be using here? I can tell you that this one is the gigabyte. That's right, a billion bytes of information is one gigabyte. And finally, what about this one? 0 0.000001 meters of distance. This one is a little bit harder, but in fact, this is one micrometer. It is one million times smaller than a meter. Imagine that you look at one millimeter on your ruler and you divide that into 1000 pieces. That's how small the micrometer is. It also has a strange symbol. This is the Greek letter mu, but we can use it just like normal letters when we are writing units like this. Here, you can see a full list of orders of magnitude as shown on Wikipedia and all of the different names that they have. To be honest, we might need even bigger and smaller numbers in the future. But there is another way that scientists can use to make numbers bigger or smaller conveniently, and that's what we're going to look at now. It's called standard form, and to learn about this, you should have an idea about how exponents work, or powers, or indices, or orders. Why does this part of maths have so many names? I don't know. Standard form is also called scientific notation, and it's most useful for even bigger or smaller numbers than our named orders of magnitude from before. To be good at standard form, you do need a little bit more maths, but understanding it will make you be even clearer on how these orders of magnitude work together. Let's look at this example of a really big number. This is 314 million, which is pretty big. Now, here is how we would write the same number in standard form. Just stop and look at it for a minute. Can you describe what is happening to turn the normal form of the number into standard form? You can think of the process as two steps, and in the first step, we put a decimal point after the first non-zero digit of our number. This always makes a number that is larger than 1 and less than 10. And in this case, we've turned our number into a much smaller number with exactly the same digits. Instead of 314 million, it is now 3.14. But because it has exactly the same digits, this smaller number is connected to our larger number by multiples of the number 10. The question is, how many multiples of 10? One way to find out is to just keep multiplying by 10 until we get back to our original number. So in this case, we would need to multiply by 10 eight times to get from 3.14 all the way up to 314 million. 
A quicker way of writing times 10 eight times is to use an exponent, and this is where we get 10 to the power of 8. So 314 million is 3.14 times 10 to the power of 8 in standard form. Another way to think about this is jumping the decimal point. Here is the number 3.14 again. To change this into our original number, we need to jump the decimal point 8 places to the right, which again is like multiplying by 10 8 times. For small numbers, we'll be doing something very similar, but we'll be going the other way. What do I mean by this? Take a moment to think, how do you think that this very small number might be written in standard form? We start off in the same way, put the decimal point after the first non-zero digit of the number, but this time we've turned our very, very tiny number into something much bigger. 3.14 is much bigger than 0 0.00000013. But it still has exactly the same digits, so it is still connected by factors of 10. To get back to our small number now, we need to divide by 10. And we can see that once again, we need to divide by 10 eight times. But when we write in standard form, we always use multiplication. Dividing by 10 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 10, and 1 over 10 is 10 to the minus 1, so we need to use a negative exponent in this case. So this very tiny number is 3.14 times 10 to the minus 8. Just notice though, there are only seven zeros after the decimal point, because we also need to jump over the 3. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Getting used to standard form can be a bit confusing at first, so here are a few tips that I hope will help you to understand it. First, people don't always stick to the rule of making our standard form number between 1 and 10. That's what you should do, but you might see 314 million written as 31.4 times 10 to the power of 7, for example. This can change how big the number looks, especially if they're also going to use the named orders of magnitude we looked at before. For example, there is no difference between 3.14 times 10 to the power of 8 meters and 31.4 times 10 to the power of 4 kilometers. And there is a big difference between 3.14 times 10 to the power of 8 kilograms and 3.14 times 10 to the power of 8 micrograms. Keep your eyes peeled. Second, notice that I took the first step of placing the decimal point after the first non-zero digit to make my standard number, and then I counted right to make it bigger and left to make it smaller. But if you start with a number and you want to move the decimal point to make your standard number, then you're going to reverse those directions. For example, if you want to turn 314 million into 3.14, you need to jump the decimal point eight places to the left, not the right. Just make sure you know where you are starting from and whether you want to make your number bigger or smaller. Finally, for small numbers, notice again that the first non-zero digit will be one of the numbers you jump over to go from your standard form number back to your original small number. So you're going to end up with fewer zeros after the decimal point than the number of orders you have jumped. So both 314 million and 0 0.000000314 both have eight digits between the two places where we find our decimal point. But the small number will include the three, but the big number will not. Some of these things here might be a little bit confusing at first, so I would say go and do some practice and make sure you get to understand standard form a little bit better, and I'm sure when you come back these tips will make more sense and you'll have a much clearer understanding of how standard form works. Finally, 
You might be asking why we even need standard form to write numbers. After all, it's not that different to write out 314 million and 3.14 times 10 to the power of 8, right? To answer that, let's look at some of the other constants of science. Here is the radius of a hydrogen atom. 5.29 times 10 to the power of minus 11 meters. And here it is in its full decimal form. But we can keep going. The estimated number of grains of sand on Earth. This is just a number, so it doesn't have any unit to go with it. What about the mass of the whole Earth in kilograms? The diameter of the universe in meters? And these numbers just keep getting harder and harder to write out in full. Then we have things like the mass of an electron or the Planck constant, which are some of the very smallest constants in modern physics. You wouldn't want to be writing out those in full every time. So that's why it's a good idea to use standard form when using these numbers. You can also remember the named orders of magnitude, which you might remember from Wikipedia in an earlier slide. So you can say that the diameter of the universe is, for example, 930 yotta meters. No, I'm not kidding about that. Or you could say that it's 930 septillion meters. But you still have to count the zeros anyway, so why not just learn to use standard form? Hi there, hope you enjoyed the video. If so, you can leave a like or a comment down below if you want. Stick around to watch some more, or if you prefer shorter videos, you can find these lessons chopped up on my other channel, which is up there. Whatever you do, please, please keep learning something, because it really is true that no matter who you are or how old you are, every day is a school day. Bye for now.